Romans three. Wait, what about Romans three? None are righteous. You take your heart off of Jesus Christ in full worship for even 20 seconds I've argued him for an hour. you are worthy of hell because this is the church what are you talking about this because Satan is most active they're in invisible. the church okay you think you think Satan is active here in Vegas yeah. Satan doesn't give a crap about Vegas no, he does. no this is a bunch of people falling in their own flesh this is what's going on in Vegas is a bunch of people falling in their own flesh the truth is that they get it. Rock out, rock Amen, no law, no doubt. But keeping my soul, it's one road, it's one way to really soar, really find out. suffering but what are you going to suffer for in this life you know as a christian there's rewards for your suffering as a child of god if you're going to be rewarded for your suffering you're suffering for the name of jesus and the bible says when you receive persecution you should rejoice in the lord so like the disciples they they were suffering they were persecuted for the name of jesus so that they have a huge reward in heaven so what are you suffering for are you just suffering just to suffer are you just suffering because you make bad decisions why are you suffering for the name of Jesus? Because you're going to suffer regardless in this life, but what are you going to suffer for? You know? Suffering for Jesus, you should, you should rejoice in this. Because there's, there's, there's reward in that. That's a good thing. But, but just to suffer, just to suffer, I mean, that's terrible. I mean, that's absolutely terrible, folks. You don't want to suffer for no reason on this earth and die being even more suffering in hell. That's a lot of folks. That's your, that's your path right now. Your suffering is all for nothing. You're, not, you're, not, you're suffering for the wrong reasons. You suffer because you live in sin, you know what I'm saying? The alcohol bottle you put down your throat, you're, you're suffering, you know, getting cancer and stuff, getting drunk, throwing up on yourself. You're suffering for the wrong reasons, you know? You're, you're, not, you're not suffering because, you know, you're a Christian and you're standing for righteousness. You're suffering just because you're a sinner. And that's the main thing to suffer for. Don't suffer. You put your own self in sufferings. Don't do that. Suffer for the name of Jesus where there's reward. You know, there's something out of it, out of it. When you die, go to heaven. God says, thank you for suffering for my namesake. That's beautiful. That actually has meaning, that has purpose behind it to suffer for, if that makes sense. What's the gospel? What's the gospel? So Jesus Christ died for your sin. All, all of those. Yeah, he did. So Jesus Christ, so Jesus Christ, so who all of us. Who did he hate? Yes. Who do you mean, who did he hate? Oh yeah, God hates all workers of iniquity, but he still died for them. God died for the whole world. So John 3, 16, God so loved the world, you've run the gun aside. No, 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 John 3, 16. Good question. Preaching the gospel, you definitely became a little bit ideologically and doctrinally, but you're preaching the gospel, right? Keep doing it. What I would say is if you read Psalm 5, 5, it says that he hates all who do it. And so if you believe in Trinitarianism, in, in that there is no separation between the Father, Son, and the Spirit, that they are all unified, if the if you read uh, the epistles that God has the elect, that the Father elects who will go to heaven, if you say that Jesus Christ died for everyone, but yet the Father elects only some, then you're saying that there, there's a break in the train. No. So also in Hebrews it says Jesus Christ tasted death for every man. You know that, right? It said he tasted death for every single man. So either the Bible's line or your line. And the Bible says he takes the death for every man. So if he takes the death for every man, you're saying he didn't die for every man. That doesn't make any sense. You see what I'm saying? And how can he die for the whole world if sinners are in the world? So wicked people are in the world, right? And he died for the world. So he died for the world, but he didn't die for the people in the world? How does that make any sense? Well, I explained the logic of what I just said about the election. That do you disagree that God has elected everyone? From the foundation of the world, from the world the Bible says he was slain from the foundation of the world. Yes, he was slain from the foundation of the world. So what do you guys believe in? Are you guys Christians? Or, oh yeah, uh, we're, I'm sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. We're Christians. Oh, okay. yeah. So did Jesus die for people in hell? 
What are you talking about? So he, he died, he died for every single person. He died so people don't go to hell. That's the he, whole point. No, no, but you said he dies for every single person, right? He died for the world. That's what the Bible says. And human beings are in the world. Gotcha. No, I get you. Yeah. But, but does he die for the people that are in hell, too? When we're in hell, that's judgment. Right. Yeah. That, that, that means exactly. he, didn't, he didn't even make it. So, so that means there's some people that he didn't die for. Oh, it's just not the people who... Because either his death... Either his... Either his people who, no, no, no. Uh, everybody... All right, so John 10, 15... And then 26 through 28, meaning there there is a uh, middle passage, and you can look it up if you think I'm just skipping the important parts. But uh, starting at verse 15, John 10, even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay my life down for the sheep. But you are not. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. He doesn't say that you do not. Believe. You are not my sheep because you don't believe. Jesus Christ says, you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. So, like, like, words matter. In fact, if you, if you go into the Gospels and, like, like, you, you can hinge a doctrine on a single verse on a single word right oh you gotta read the bible as in there entirely because if you just focus on one verse yes. that can be very very dangerous Agreed. you know what i'm saying Agreed. so Agreed. so yeah so do you believe in what they've always said you believe in that i do believe why do you believe that if that's against the bible because are you saved by grace alone through faith alone yes or no read ephesians no. one so the I don't know, so ephesians, ephesians it says you're saved by faith through grace it doesn't say alone yes. It doesn't say alone. Oh, yes, 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 let's go there. No, it says, no, it says you're saved by faith through grace. It says that it doesn't say it says you shouldn't have boast. It what about Romans but you guys add alone to it. You add alone to it. Because the Bible says in James, you're not saved by faith alone. I can show you in James it says you're not saved, you're not saved by faith alone. It says in James, it's not it says faith, it says not faith alone, not faith only. So you guys, no, you, I know James. But, I know James. But you're adding to the Bible. If you, if you say alone, then you can have that doctrine. But if you don't say alone, you can't have it. And then it says, save by grace through faith. Stop there. Don't add alone to it. Just add, just stop there. Then we read James, it makes sense. But okay, you need works to be justified to have perfect faith. See what I'm saying? But if you add alone to it, it makes the Bible look contradictory. Because if you read James, it says, you're not, you're not saved by faith alone. So that's why you can't add to the Bible. Adding to the Bible, you can have all types of doctrines what about Romans? add to the Bible. What about Romans 3? Uh, we hold that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. How do you justify that with James 2 then? Yeah, so you're justified. No, see, your faith gives you righteousness. But yeah. by works, you get justified by it. Did you see what I'm okay, saying? Okay, so, so I think we're talking about the same thing. I think we're talking about the same thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't just bombard it. All right. Like, listen, I want to make it clear. I am I'm thankful you. you're out here. Good for you. Preaching the gospel. Yes. Absolutely. God, God, no, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. God be the glory. What have you guys out here for? Like, we're, we're here for the no, NFR. For me. You guys go for me. No, we're, we're here for the NFR. We're for the NFR, to be honest. But, but we are. We're the rodeo. National, National Fund of the Rodeo. So, uh, but that said, I want to have a conversation. I'm not saying, like, you're going to hell. I'm not saying I'm going to hell. Like, one or other. So, so who's going to hell? Like, we can both be going to heaven and we just have a disagreement. So like, we're, we're going to hash that out. We'll go to hell. We'll go to hell. Those, those, who go to, those who are going to hell are those who put their faith in their own righteousness. If you think that you're going to heaven by your own works, you are going to hell. Going to hell. So it doesn't mean, and that's what James is talking about, and, and good for you for calling that up. Because, like, the truth is a tightrope. You can fall off on one side or the other. You can fall off on the antinomian side. Antinomian is Greek for anti-law, meaning like you can live how you want and I just like say, oh, I love Jesus Christ, I'm going to heaven. No, that's not how it works. Or you can fall off on the other side, which means that you only go to heaven if you live the perfectly or even whatever righteous life. But that's the danger is if you say, well, what is perfectly? Only one man has lived perfectly. Okay, so if you go fall off on the other side, then where's the bar? Where's the bar? But, but it's, it's fruits and roots. The, the, the root of salvation is faith. The fruit of salvation is works. 
And that's what James is talking about. Absolutely, 100%, you cannot get down here and get drunk off your ass and go to strip clubs and go to heaven. 100%, you are 100% right. But that doesn't mean that if you don't do that, you're going to heaven. Even if you profess the name of Jesus Christ. Even if you profess the name of Jesus Christ. That's not what that means. It means that because Jesus Christ has died for you, you know 100% that you put your hope in your Savior and your good works are a response to what he has done. And everything that, that, that the Bible is talking about, like you would know them by their works, it's not that you're going to earn your way by their works. It's because if you are living that life out in your good works, that's the testament of God to the world that I have done a work in this man's heart. Does that make sense? Brothers, that we are brothers. Oh, no, because we believe in one thing all of so that, that's a false doctrine. And the Bible says that you believe in a false doctrine, you're a curse. Yes. So how is that false? Because you're saying, do you think a Christian can lose their salvation? Do you believe a Christian can lose their salvation? No. But how? If the Bible clearly says you can. In Hebrews, you, say, you, no, can, you, can, you can tread upon the blood of Jesus tasted. Christ. It says, it says that better for you to not even be a part of the faith. And also, the Bible says there be many who depart from the faith. So you, you got to be in the faith to depart from the faith. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, to be yeah, in this thing, you have to, to be the part you gotta, you gotta be in it. So the Bible says, the last days, many will depart from the faith, taking heed to the same spirit's doctrines of demons. So if someone is believing a false doctrine, you know they're going to hell. Even to say you're a Christian, you know, from prosperity gospel. Of course. Yeah, yeah, false no, gospel. No, all, you know what I'm saying? Like that, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So as a Christian, you can lose your salvation. It's definitely possible. That's why Jesus says in Matthew, all right, Matthew, Lord, Lord, me and say, Lord, yeah, Lord, I've done good. many good works in your name. You know, I did all these miracles in your name. Those are Christians. Those aren't atheists. Those are not Satanists. John says those they are never people. Professing Christians. Professing. That's a okay. professing. But there's a people who can actually not be saved at first who departed, no, though. But, they say, but the Bible saved. says they departed from the faith. That means they're in the faith. Also, Paul says, work out your own salvation or fear of trembling. If you can't lose your faith, why don't he tell you, work out your own salvation? Without making sense, they also he says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. Paul says, it, examine. Yeah, exactly. hey. So what does that yeah. mean? So, but, but if you can't lose yeah. your salvation, why yeah. why do you say work out your faith? Why do you say work it out and examine? I can tell you. The, you you bring up very logical questions, and I appreciate that you bring them up. However, if you take a ten thousand foot view, so for example, when he says that many have partaken. What he means is that you've been a part of a local body. You've seen the work of the Holy Spirit. You've seen former drug addicts. You've seen people who have cast apart their sin and put it aside. And now they have a new hope in them. And you've witnessed all of that. And yet that's not enough for you. And yet you leave the faith. There's no more evidence that can be done. But we think you were saved? No, but the, 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 no, no, no. It, no, it's no, no. They were not saved before. That's exactly what it is. So what no, say? read the parable of the soil. Okay, what you the, the, the parable. No, like, dude, you went on for a long time. Judas was never saved. Judas was never saved. No, what did Jesus say? No one has left me. The son of perdition. So that the word would be God would be gave the twelve disciples. No, he said no one left other than the son of perdition. Not the same as salvation, though. No one left. Miracles does not even salvation. So the so thing is, though, would be he had to have the power of God to, to do a miracle, though. So did Balaam. Yes, Jesus, so did yeah, Saul. Exactly. Jesus gave so him power. So you can do bro. a miracle, and that doesn't power. mean you're saved. Exactly. A hundred percent. He against Christ. And 100%. he's not in heaven. We know Jesus is not in heaven. Exactly. He's not in heaven. So, so he's not, Judas, no, of course Jesus is in heaven. But he, he was never saved. He was never saved. No. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. But he was called an apostle. Okay, read First John. First John is written so that you will know that you will be saved. Tell me where in 1 John it says the evidence of faith is that you did miracles. No, but Jesus said, meaning in that day, say, Lord, Lord. And yes, also, Jesus yes, says, lukewarm yes, Christians. Yes, he says, yes. I wish you were lukewarm. I was picture you out of my mouth. Jesus says that to his church in of Revelation. Course, of course. So if you're in the church, you've got to be part of the faith. He says that to the visible church. You know what I'm saying? No, he so says that to the visible church. church of people no, 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 who are visible believers. church. So, because, so you're because, invisible church. What because, are you talking about? There's certain churches. They're not invisible. They're not invisible. In the church. Okay. You think 
You think Satan is active here in Vegas? Yeah. Satan doesn't give a crap about Vegas. No, he does. No, this is a bunch of people falling in their own flesh. This is what's going on in Vegas. It's a bunch of people falling in their own flesh. The truth is that Satan doesn't give a crap about this because they're falling in their own soul into hell. He cares about religion. Satan is most active in the realm of religion. And that's exactly why he's talking about the doctrines of demons that are being taught in the church. And one of the doctrines Amen. of demons is that you are getting saved by your works. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Originally, I thought you were a brother. Now you're talking about people being about saved by works. I didn't say you're saved by works. How are you saved by works? You just said... What are you saying? You said, so the Bible says... I said you're saved by faith, you loans, or grace, loans, and you judge, disagree. You you're the only alternative works, is, is works. 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 works make your faith perfect, as it says in James. So that's why James was saying, you know, show me your faith, you know, with, with, without your words. I'll show you my faith, you know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying, right? So James says, I'll show you my faith with my words and show me your faith without your words. So works that. matter. I'm not, you're not saved by works. Of course they do. I'm not saying you're saved by works. Because first you got saved by grace. Without God's grace, none of us can be saved. Amen. Then you, 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 you have to have faith. You. you have to have faith in Christ. And like you said, your faith will produce actual works. Yes. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to say. It's root or root. The root is faith. The fruits will be uh, works. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not preaching works, but God's going to judge you by your works. That's why... You're that's saying, why, If you think you could lose your salvation, that's works. No, you can. Because like I and said, that's, works. that's not You're works. earning it. You're not earning it. So the that. only difference between you and your unsaved neighbor is that you have something inherently worthy, inherently holy, inherently more intelligent than your neighbor. No. So, that's, that's so exactly what you're So the saying. Bible says, be perfect as I am perfect. Be holy as I am holy. So, you know, they try to strive for perfection, no, holiness, exactly. and it, it takes work. And also, and also, and also Jesus says, perfect. you have to walk in the good works that were ordained for you. So we are, we're ordained to work in good works. Like, I'm, I have to do this. I'm, I'm ordained to do this. And if I don't do this, I'm being rebellious against God. And that's a sin. For me, not, for me not to be obedient to God, that's a sin. So even if I say I believe in Jesus, but, but if I say I believe in Jesus and I do what I'm called to do, that, my work, my faith is deny. dead, bro. The first part says faith without works is dead. What so does works mean? Huh? Define what works means. Wait, what do, do you want no, the Lord call you to do? Yeah, faith without works is dead. Okay, do let me ask you one question. I won't even grab the mic. So you said faith without works is dead. Yeah, does that mean that's faith, that's faith yes. without yes. perfection is dead? See, what the Bible well, says, be perfect as he is perfect. No, no, so, there are people in the Bible who are called perfect. Um, Noah was called perfect. I think it was, was it Josiah? No, he's called blameless. He's called blameless, not perfect. Noah was no perfect. Well, perfect. No, he called him righteous and blameless. No, he's perfect. He's but that, that's perfect. not what perfect. Perfect. the Hebrew means. So. He, okay. he believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. It doesn't say that he was sinless. No, I didn't say it was sinless. But, 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 but perfect is what Christ was. But when the word says perfect, it's not. Okay, yeah, but God, God, Jesus was sinless, but God says be perfect, He is perfect. So when you say perfect, a lot of time, you do everything like um, physically perfect, but you can be morally perfect by obeying God's commandments, yes. the attention of the heart. So that's how these men in the Old Testament were called perfect. Even though they had sin, God still looked at them as perfect because their hearts were pure towards the Lord. So we can be perfect towards God. It's not perfect us being like, it was through great. faith, though. Okay, yeah, exactly. So God calls us to be perfect as he is perfect. So morally perfect is what I mean. Morally listen, perfect. Listen, I agree. And the Bible says be perfect. So, I mean, you're, you're saying not don't do that. That's what the Bible says, though. No, no, no. no, no, no. So, no, no, no. The Bible says to, be, to strive to be perfect. We no. can't be perfect. No, we no can't. The, God says be perfect when I'm perfect. That's very simple. That. Okay, it's not, so that it's means you think it is. I explain it's morally perfect. I'm saying it's morally perfect. Yes, it's morally you morally perfect. You see what I'm saying? We can be? Yeah. So you're morally perfect. You can, be more, you can obey God's commandments. Can you not obey God's commandments? No. no Jesus you said no one is right. Romans 3. Three. Not. Not. No. Wait, what about Romans 3? No, no, right. you take your heart off of Jesus Christ in full worship for even 20 seconds, I've argued him for an hour. you are worthy of hell. That is what be perfect as your father is perfect means. Right. And I'm not, I'm not the negating Bible, the law. I'm what not negating the, the Bible, law. Though? What I'm saying is if you think you've passed that test and we have not, you've got no, a problem. I didn't, I didn't say you guys did that. I'm saying what the Bible says. No, I'm telling you I'm a sinner. And Why? I will sin tomorrow. You shouldn't say you're a sinner. Well, I am sinners. a sinner. Okay, yes. read First yes. Corinthians 6. Okay, so how about what the Bible says in John that God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners? 
So how does that make sense? If God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners and say you're a sinner, how does that make sense? Now you're justified. Because First John says, if anyone says they're without sin, they're a liar and the, and the truth is not in them. That's First John. You would agree. So explain that to me. Okay. So, yeah. Are you without can, sin? Look I'm not saying that. I'm not saying right now. I'm not saying that. I don't will for that. No, we're good. No, we're good. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. You would agree. Okay. No, I'm trying to say this. Also, when Paul, when Paul, Paul addresses this, this Paul says, you say you're without sin. I'm not saying without sin. You're a liar and the truth is not in you. I don't live this. I don't willfully sin. It doesn't matter. It says if you're without sin. It does. It does matter. No, without sin means future. But I don't willfully sin, though. I don't willfully sin. Okay. Willfully sin is practicing. Like, you plan out sin. I'm planning to go to Las Vegas. I'm planning get drunk, I plan to live, that's willfully sinning, you know what I'm saying, I, I, I don't, we don't willfully listen, sin. Listen, I would agree with you if that's a pattern of life. There are many tests, there are many tests of salvation in scripture. In fact, by my count, I've got them on my phone, there's about 80 of them in the New Testament. And there are many tests of salvation in scripture, and they're not 100% because, like I said, truth is a tightrope. And you can fall off on no, one no, side or the other. No, no. What it is, is a Christian can I fall agree. back oh, into sin. When I That's why Paul wrote the letter to Galatians. Right, so How are you foolish you Galatians? Say, Were you saved by the Spirit and are you being uh, justified by the flesh? No, because you can't fall off. But your pattern of life will prove where it is. But that's only proving what God has done in your heart. It's not proving anything that you have done. It's not proving that you can lose your salvation. It's not proving that uh, you earn your salvation. It's only proving what God has done in your heart. I'm not denying that a true Christian will live a holy life. I will never deny that, ever. But the question is, did you do it or did God do it? And I will stand here in front of you and say, God did it. Sanctification process. Yeah, so me living holy and righteously, God gives a lot of glory because I can't do it without Him. That's all part of the sanctification process. You so, if you're in God, you cannot use yourself. Well, you can actually, but you can come out though. You can show no, you. You cannot. You have free will. You, you cannot. always have free will, bro. You have free will. You always Define have free will. will. Yes, Define you do have free will. Free will. Have you read Romans? Yeah, you have the ability to choose God and not choose God. Also, God told Israelites, I put this thing before you, life or death, choose life or blessing. If that was God's chosen people, God told him, choose life or choose death. That's free will. But also this, so do you think we can be saints? Do you think we can be saints? Do you think we can be saints? Saints, I've, I've studied Greek in seminary multiple years. Saints is just a plural term. But Paul says grace to the saints. He doesn't say grace to the sinners. Right. So why are you calling you a sinner? If, if Christ, God is calling you a saint, and you're saying you're a sinner. We're all sinners. We're not all sinners. No, we're not. We're all sinners. We're not all sinners. We're all sinners. No, we're not all sinners in front of God, but you're misunderstanding. It's about how God sees us. It's about how God sees us. I appreciate your message, but I'm not sorry. I'm not shaking your hand. I can't wait to gossip. You leave a false gossip. But take yourself out. You need to have your hand. We're saying false stuff. We're all sinners. We're not all sinners. That's confusing. If a, if a sinner says, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I'm also a sinner, that's confusing, bro. That's confusing. That's contradicting. No, listen. That's the whole fucking point. That's the whole point. We're all sinners and we fall short of the mission. That's the whole point. You just start cussing, you still have no patience, you have no fruit of the spirit. It doesn't matter. It, it all doesn't matter. So walk in the fruit of the spirit, it doesn't matter. matter. That's all that matters. See what I'm saying? He exposed himself. And, 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 you and this are, is the problem with that doctrine, because that doctrine, you don't walk in holiness and righteousness. So this is what you need to be born again, as the Bible says in John 2 3. You can't and be born again. Do you, 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 you know him? Do you know him? I don't know. Oh, okay. That's why oh, okay. I love him. Like, oh, no, I, I don't know. 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 But that's the problem. When you say you're a sinner, it's like you're cursing yourself. You say, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. You're cursing yourself, bro. Don't say, don't say you're a sinner. And God has redeemed you with his blood. And you can be a saint. You can walk in holiness and righteousness. You're not doing that by yourself, of course. But you're doing that by the power of God that lives inside you. You should rejoice in that. You shouldn't say, oh, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. That, that, that. You're going against what God did, bro. You, do you think the Bible says in the Philippians, do, uh, do all Christ, you know, you can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. You see what I'm saying? So you shouldn't be calling yourself a sinner. Especially the Bible also says, we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus 
you're more than conquerors. So you can't be more than a conqueror and be like, oh, I'm still a sinner at the same time. Like, no. Christ died for our sins, so we're all sinners. Otherwise, he died for nothing. Yeah, but you can be a former sinner. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6. Hold on. I don't know. Man, not always, not always you're an asshole. You're an asshole. You're a sinner. I'm saving by preaching the gospel. Uh, that's how I'm saying. You know what sin is, bro. You know what sin is. Sin is going against God's commandments. Sin is not making you mad. That's not a sin. I'm not mad. Well, sin is not making people mad. Sin is going against God's word. That's what sin you don't, is. You don't make me mad. You make me laugh. But I'm saying, bro, you think sin is making people mad. That's not yes. what sin is. Sin, say that. bro, that's what, it's, that's what it seems like. I'm saying I sin that. is going against God's word directly. That is sin. You just can't. What do I go against God's word? You're being mad to people. You're not spreading love. You're spreading arrogance. Do you think truth is love? Do you think truth is love? Being rude is not a sin. It's, it's, it's truth, probably, love, you think it's preaching the wrong gospel. I'm preaching the wrong gospel. I'm preaching yeah. from the Bible. Bro. No, listen. Like, I, I preach the gospel where we're at. I live in Maine, River, Washington. We go to Nashville <laughs> Shore Park and we preach the gospel. Yeah, go get your I jobs do exactly what you're doing. And I get angst on you. That happens. That shit to do. Like, I'm not, He's I'm not a faker right now. I know. I can tell. Yeah, I know. I didn't know what you were. I just know, but once he was, he's a false gospel, though. Because it's not even in the Bible. The, the apostles never preach what they always say. It, it doesn't say you're saved by faith alone. No, 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 no. It's not in the Bible, bro. They do preach what they always say. But the problem is, is that. So, so tell me this. Okay, so when Paul talks to the letters, when, God, when Paul writes his letters, he talks to Christians, right? Paul's only talking to Christians. Of course. So when, God, when Paul talks to the Corinthians, the first Corinthians 6 9 says, Do not be the seed. Talking to Christians in the church. Do not be deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if a Christian can't lose their salvation, why would Paul even tell them, hey, don't be deceived. You will not enter the kingdom of God and do these things. They're Christian, obviously. He's not saying, hey, you can say You're saying, no, like, don't be deceived. Like, you won't go to heaven if you continue in this lifestyle. Good question. See what I'm saying? So is uh, Paul uh, God? And does he have omniscience? Is he all right? I have not seen videos about God's creating plans. No, okay. So he's writing to the church as far as he knows. Okay, so if you read the doctrine, which Paul and Peter and Christ and the Old Testament has all written, if you read uh, uh, Isaiah 53, if you go to excuse me, uh, Jeremiah 32, I believe, don't be wrong on the chapter. But he says, I will put the truth of me in their hearts so that they will not turn away from me. And that is a, uh, a prophecy of the new covenant. Meaning they will not turn away from me. So you're talking about a letter from Paul to a church. He is not God. So you, just like you said before, you need to bring all of scripture into this. Yes, he is 100% he is factual that if you turn away you're not of god but 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 if you, but, but it, that's true in the group that's what i told you in the beginning okay so jesus talked to the churches right jesus told a lot of the churches to repent or he's going to remove their candlestick so what does that mean what does that mean though so if you so if he's talking to christians he's saying christians if you don't repent i'm going to remove your candlestick what does that mean to you it's because God said that he will build his church, and the second that Christ started to build his church, Satan started to count, uh, build in counterfeits. In fact, 2 Peter 2 says that many false teachers will arise among you, meaning among the brethren, bringing in many destructive heresies. Right? Okay. This is foretold in Scripture. That, that just because you're in the church doesn't mean that Satan isn't bringing his minions in. It doesn't mean that Satan isn't bringing his minions in to rise to leadership. Like they could rise to the pastor. They could rise to the pulpit. And it doesn't mean they were ever saved. In fact, they've always been a child of Satan. It doesn't mean they were saved and they weren't saved. It means that Satan is bringing up his, his seeds. That's the parable of the soil. There's some people who are implants. But there are some people who fall away from the faith, and I think the Bible said that clearly, that you can fall away from the faith, you know what I'm saying? The Bible said to be a great fall away, also in the last days. Fall away of who? Yes. Well, falling away from the truth, because, like, think about uh, Old Testament Israel. Like, you have people who seemingly love the law, 
And think about the United States of America 100 years ago, who seemingly loved the law, and now they don't even protect. But That's what the Bible's talking about. about Lucifer, though. Lucifer was saved, so he fell, right? So it's like, you can start off saying they were God. Same as Adam and Eve. Okay, yeah, so, so like I said, yeah, you can right, start, right. you can start, you know, you can separate, be saved. That's separate, though. But the second you fall, who died for the angels then? No, 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 they're created, same as man. Who died for the angels? How are the angels going to get down? The, the fallen angels, the demons. They're not. Exactly. Because you cannot get to heaven by your works. If one of those demons decided that they're going to fall the law, too bad, bro. Over. It's by, it's by grace alone. The faith. So it's, for you to have that high of a status in heaven, to be a I mean, I mean, you can be a rugby baby, man. I mean, he's pretty good to be here. He's a story. So it's a new one to sit down. It's a new one to sit down. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to sit down. But I'm trying to tell you the one thing also that's going to happen. I love you, too. I love you, too, bro. 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 I love you, I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, so I'm just trying to say, I'm just preaching what the gospel is saying, like, throughout the, throughout a lot of things, well, throughout the years, there's a lot of added doctrines to the church, and a lot of added doctrines. Well, there's works of the law, so there's works of the law, and there's good works. Okay, exactly but there's the works of the law, and well, there's like good works of the law, and there's good works. So, works are, so works of the law, about, uh, is it, is not the law of Moses, but the law of Moses, and the kind of sacrifice, you know, cow and stuff that they would eat it. That's what we're talking about. But, yeah, he's talking about the works of the law. He says, I'm not going to say the law is sin. He's bound to be bound by the law. He's going to be the whole law. He's talking about the law of Moses. He's not talking about all works in general. He's talking about the law of Moses. Okay, so what he's saying is the law of Moses. That's not good works, but the Bible says, you need good works. Okay, but you can Say, need good works, so so we gotta we gotta different what type of works are we talking about? I think I think people just put works in one category. So when you hear works, like okay, all works is bad. No, no, no. Leviticus and Deuteronomy is all about case law, the Ten Commandments. A lot of people like to think that the law Moses is the Ten Commandments, which it is. But there's six hundred sixteen. There's six hundred sixteen case laws of the Ten Commandments. Meaning, if you saw saw a short skirt walking by you right now. And you need to double take it, you're guilty before God. Troy, that's your name, right? Okay. So, I just want to hear what's wonderful. Yes. Telling someone to kill their kid and then telling them. Exactly. Because he's building on the law of Moses. That wasn't the new law. He's saying the law of Moses says to you, and I'm going to give you more clarification. He's telling you exactly what the law of Moses is. So you're going to double take it tonight? Tell you tell me you haven't saw a short skirt tonight? And you think you're just glad to go to heaven tonight? Look at that short skirt as I was. It's like, it's a picture of the heart. So, no, I'm saying, I'm saying these though. So, it, it, he said if you look to the woman with lust, meaning sexual desire. Yeah, okay. So you're just looking because, hey, I wonder what her threads are. No, I wonder if that's but, my law. No, if, if you're just glancing at people, that's not a sin though. You know what I'm saying? If you happen to catch them, no. Yeah, that's exactly but, but my like this, like, no, Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's lust. I said, I said a double thing. I said, yeah, yeah, I said yeah. double take. Right. No, I'm just double take. You've never done double take. Uh, no. How long have you been preaching the gospel? Like, three years now? And you've never done the double take. You've been here on the last week of trip, you've never done the double take. Well, wow, brother, then you are more holier than I. No, I'm not. I'm not more holier than you. I just put my faith in Christ. No, but it's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's just like, if I know a woman is that has a blue belt, I don't even know how to go that direction. You know what I'm saying? Even if I see a girl that's like, my look at me, I don't even look that direction, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't even do my eye contact because y'all are more afraid of to duck at the stuff and stuff. So I'm just trying to do the commands. You know what I'm saying? Like, the fact that I'm playing in the game, I'm really trying to discipline my eyes. The Bible says, you know, I won't, I won't sit down with the kids from my eyes. I'm just going to come in with my eyes. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, no, it's not, it's not me being holy, but I'm just trying to be a good holy. Okay, so I'm just trying to say, I'm trying to be more disciplined, man. And if I know a woman is really very like, like, seductive, I'm going to look that direction. Okay, so I'm like, all right, well, I don't want to look that way too. Because I'm like, I'm not going to look that way. 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 I'm not going to look that way
because then my heart, that's the place my heart is, bro. Then I start lusting and stuff like that, and it's not good, bro. It's not, it's not good. So, yeah. I mean, if I get a glance at a woman, I'm like, all right, that's not good. I got to out. I'm not even going to look at the direction because I don't want to do a double take. I already know it's over there. So that's kind of how my mind works. I don't know how yours works. So that's how, that's how my world. works. My mind works exactly the same, and that's why I'm confused, right? Because right now you're talking about grace by faith and love. Like, that's exactly what you're pressing right now. No, no, no. That, that's exactly what worries me. Is right when I press you, when I press you, you're saying no. I, occasionally, I'm not saying that I've never done it, but I try to discipline myself. That's good. That's exactly what I do. No, but you know why I do it? You know, but the difference is, and this is goes back to what I told you in the beginning, it's fruit and root. Do you know why I discipline myself? It's because of what Christ has already done. It's because that guy died. Jesus Christ died for every sin that I have ever committed, and he had my name on his heart when he died on that cross. Why would I blaspheme him by doing a double take? And I've done a double take. I'm not going to tell you I haven't done a double take. I've done it. But I, I discipline myself, not because that justifies me, but because my Savior died for me for that sin. And that's what you're out here denying, man. Yeah, you are. You're trying to say that you're saved by your works. You are not saved by your works. If you get justice, you're going to hell. If I get justice, I'm going to hell. If any person on this trip gets justice, they're going to hell. I don't care what they do. They could not sin the rest of their life. You and I could perfectly never do a double case, and we still deserve hell. That's what you're missing. It's the grace that you're missing. I'm not denying that, bro. But that's not in the Bible. But it's not in the Bible. Because that will go against what James says. And the Bible says. It's not in the Bible, you just said that that's what you believe. No, I'm saying it's not in the Bible. But it's not in the Bible. No, I'm saying you're adding a law next to that scripture when it doesn't say a law in the scripture. You're saying a law, bro. No, I'm not saying there aren't scriptures that say that. I'm saying that's what you're missing.